Hey guys, uh, next installment of the relief project for sculpture. Uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking to the camera. I'm going to go in and pan it down and uh, continue working on the project. I will uh, do that right now. I hope that you all are well. You can see... Let me get this closer here. I have not worked on it since we last met. And the plan is on Wednesday is we are all going to have a working session together so that we can work together um, on uh, via Zoom. So that's what our plan will be for Wednesday. It's staying nice and wet and nice and pliable under the plastic. Again, not leaving it on the wear board. Okay. Like super plastic. I haven't sprayed it or anything. So with the ceramics class, um, the historical pieces, I have sprayed a little bit. But I think that's because the plastic is a little different. Like this really hefty-duty trash bag is a great way to keep the moisture retained. And uh, with the ceramics projects, they've been underneath this target bag. So they've set up a little bit, which is okay, actually, because... Um, I'm doing two at once, so it's nice to be able to work on those in tandem and be able to build them a little bit faster. Okay, so all I'm going to continue to do is work on the front of the fish. I have, again, the eye started on one side, and I'm going to continue working on the eye, on the, the other eye, in relation to my sketch. Okay, so because it stayed so wet, I don't need to slip and score. So this is just going to be essentially a working session. I'm not going to talk too much. Just trying to make sure I get the eyelids proportionate. Smoothing the socket of the eye into the base slab. Using my sculpting tools. And essentially just reflecting what I see here over here. And I'm sure that you all have gone online and seen hundreds and hundreds of different, not thousands of different relief sculpting videos. And you got a chance to look at Wesley's that I sent you personally on Facebook. His is on Facebook. You know, YouTube has many, many, many wonderful videos available doing the same technique. There are some sculptors or ceramicists that specifically focus on only making relief sculpture. Hopefully you can just see that I'm going back and forth between using my hand and using the soft curve of the tool to get the eyes similar to one another. Now remember is when you're sculpting something in relief, you have to sculpt it in a way where it's going to be seen from an aerial perspective, straight on, not, um, not at an angle, okay? So whenever you look at it at an angle, the proportions and such may be off a little bit. But whenever you look at it straight on, like on the wall or at a slight angle, then the proportions are similar to your sketch or your design that you have prior to um, building up the surface. Okay. I'm going to now add a nice big piece 
for the front face. So I rolled it out and then I'm going to pinch a little cavity or a little area off of the front of the face so that that's where the eye is going to be. So it has more of a feeling of, of an eye socket or an eye placement so we don't lose the eye whenever we build up the clay in front of the, of the eye with the rest of the face. Transitioning it. Using the soft touch of your finger is a really great way. To get that transition. And with fish, there's not a lot of anatomical uh, changes. I mean, there are, but there's not like in a in the face of a human, you'll see quite quite a few dramatic shifts and transitions from the brow line to the eye socket to underneath the eye socket where the nose is um, to the cheeks. All of that uh, with a fish, it's it's a fairly. Um, I mean, there there are divisions. There are separations, but it's mostly pretty fluid, uh, no pun intended, since, you know, your fish are in a fluid state or in a fluid place. And as you know by now, I'm not a very good comedian, so my puns and my... My jokes aren't very good. So I removed a little too much down here. So what I'm going to do is come back in and just add a little bit more. And I'll pick it up and I'll show you what I mean. And that's the beautiful thing about working in relief is if you do remove too much, you can always come back in and uh, reassess or add more if you need to. I don't know if any of you have ever made mask, but mask making is a really great way to start getting definition on the face of um, of certain animals or aquatics or whatever it might be a mammal. Whenever it comes to looking at them in aerial perspective, because a mask is very much front on, like right in the face. So by having um, experience doing mask, it really does kind of open up the uh, channels, <laughs> no pun intended, again of uh, the possibilities of defining a face in aerial perspective like this. Okay, so just real quick, show you the face that I'm working on, the definition that I'm starting to get. I'll show you this side as well. You can see that the buildup of the clay here is the front of the face. It's going to be seen like this, so there's going to be more shadow where the eyes are. I accidentally cut out of the eye too much here, so on its on its left side or your right. And so what I did is I came back in and I just added a little coil on the bottom of the eye to fill it back in and start working on it. So with this round here that I'm working on, I'm not focusing too much on a lot of specific detail. I'm just very much like how you have the sketch laid out for the overall form um, before you start adding the clay on top. It's the same concept with, with these first parts that you're adding, um, just getting a general concept or a general a direction. So now I'm gonna start using the clay to create the body. Okay, start building up the body. Try not to cut away from the rest of the design too much. 
Try not to get any air pockets in there, okay? No air pockets. And remember, we really don't want this to get too dry because what we're going to do, you can see with my fingerprints, I'm starting to get the idea of the scale, the scales of the fish, of the koi. All right. So whenever I'm pounding the clay down onto the slab, I'm making sure that I'm trying to get a similar texture that I'm ultimately going to want to have. Um, but you don't want any air in there, okay, because what we're going to do is this is why we don't get it too dry is we're going to flip it over once we get the general shape and then we're going to carve out from the inside and we're going to carve up into these uh, into these thick areas where the clay has been just added on top. Okay, I'm making sure I keep that delineation or that separation between the fish body and the rest of the environment. Again, I want the fish body to kind of recede as it goes back towards the tail so that it's not at the same height with the body as the center of the sunflowers here or the top of the head. So delineating so that I remember like where the fin is. All right, I have two fins, right? I got a fin that's coming in over here, and then I also have another fin that's kind of coming out here that's going to be in relation with the flower petals, okay? So they're just going to kind of overlap one another. I haven't quite decided what part is going to go on top of the other, the fin or the petal, most likely the petal. Uh, that's yet to be decided, okay? I'm going to go just a little bit more, and I'm going to add... So a little bit for the tail, uh, making the coil or the clay that I'm adding in the back a little bit thinner, not as thick as the rest of the body. Because again, it's going to be the, this illusion of it, it receding back into nature, or in this case, in this environment where this koi fish and, this, uh, and these sunflowers are both existing together in the same environment. You can see when I'm carving in to the slab of clay, it's starting to reveal this, this relief. That would be what's called ball relief, which is very subtle, small relief. And then this would start to be more high relief where you have the top of the fish. Okay, I'm going to build up the center of the fish just a little bit more. Again, just keeping it fairly general, just making sure that the pieces that you're adding do smooth in and stick to some area of the where the rest of the clay is, just finding a place where it all can stick and kind of smooth together, become one. Okay, again, kind of keeping that texture, transitioning that tail down where it looks like it's getting thinner or going away from the uh, viewer's eye, called receding in space. Okay, all right, so I won't keep this too long. There's just your general idea of how we're developing the fish, okay, the koi. Onto the relief slab, you can see it's starting to find some definition in relation to the sunflowers. I'll work on the face a little bit more to kind of give it more definition coming off of the slab. Not too much, though. And those eyes are nice and deep. They really stand out. And then um, I'll just keep continuing on that um, whenever we next meet, which will be Wednesday. Okay. So I hope this video goes up without any problems and you get a chance to see it sometime today. All right, take good care.